of faith and my lack of faith. That's why it's so important that we find that faith that is not wavering but is consistent. That is continuing. When sickness comes, God is going to heal me. When I don't have money in the bank, God is going to provide. When the doctor says, I got a week to live, God is going to heal me. Not this, he can heal me. Or if it's his will, he's going to heal me. I believe God has a perfect time for everything. I believe in being in the will of God. I also believe the will of God is for us to be healed. God already said it. He wants to heal you. He's going to heal you if you can find that level of faith. The lame man. The lame man that was carried to the rooftop. Oh. He was lame. I think he had the palsy. He couldn't get out of bed. He said, you know what? I, I heard of Jesus. He's coming to town. And I'm almost done. He's coming to town. I want to go see Jesus. But I can't get up. I can't walk. So he found his four friends and he said, here, put me on this bed and, and I want you to carry me to Jesus. I don't know how far it was. It could have been miles and miles and over the mountain around the corner. I don't know. But I do know when they got there, there was instant disappointment. For you see, the house was full. The door was blocked. The windows were blocked. There was no way to get in there. I imagine one of the men said, All right, we did our job. We couldn't get you in there, so we're going to go back. A for effort. God didn't heal me. A for effort. He'll heal me next week. It wasn't his will. So you think it isn't God's will more times than it is his will. So the lame man said, no, 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 no. I've come this far. I've had to carry this burden for so long. I am not leaving until I am in the presence of Christ. So you, you go get some rope and you go make a ladder and come back when you're finished and you're going to take me to the top of that roof. We're going to pry those tiles back and you're going to let me down because I come too far. I've cried too many tears. I had to bear this pain for too long. So that's what they did. They climbed up on the rooftop, tore back the tiles, and they lowered down the lame man. I imagine all the Pharisees and all the high-minded people were looking up thinking, what is this guy disturbing the master for? Their minds started analyzing. Their minds started thinking like a human would think. That's why I said you've got to turn that off tonight. That gets you in trouble so often when it comes to God trying to perform the miraculous. They looked up. He came through, was lowered down. And this is what you need to get tonight. The Bible doesn't say this. But I believe God gave us an imagination for something. I believe that lame man looked back up. He said, boys, it's been long enough. You can throw that rope down. You can throw that rope down. Remember, the doors were blocked. The windows were blocked. He came in that way one way. And he was going to leave a different way. When those ropes were let down, that was absolute faith. Saying, I'm here now. I'm in your presence now, Christ. You've got to heal me or nobody else is going to. And we know that Jesus healed him. 
we know that Jesus not only healed him, but Jesus forgave him of his sins. But when they let that rope down, or that's my imagination, that's my per perception of the situation. There are ropes in our lives right now. There are worries in your life right now. There is fear. What if God doesn't do it? You have got to rebuke that. Get that mindset out of your mind. Fear is the opposite of faith. I believe that many churches are just one miracle away from revival. I believe some of your lives are one miracle away from a personal and spiritual breakthrough. I know tonight, and I am confident tonight, that it is the will of God for the miraculous to take place and to be birthed tonight. It is the will of God for the blinded eyes to be opened, the deaf ears to be unstopped, the lame to walk and the dumb to speak. If you need the Holy Ghost tonight, God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost. If you can find enough faith for the Holy Ghost, you're going to receive the Holy Ghost. If you need a miracle tonight, if you can find enough faith within your soul, you're going to receive a miracle tonight. Because it's the will of God for it to happen tonight. And truth will be established in our midst. Can we stand to our feet, please? I've got one more story to tell, and I'm, I'm done. God, I can do nothing. God, you have got to do it, or nobody else can. I remember a story of Billy Cole. It was told to me by my old superintendent, Brother Robinette, in Austria. Billy Cole was a great evangelist, a man of faith, to those of you who don't know him. One day he was called over to a house. This was in his earlier years of ministry. He was called over to pray for a young girl that had passed away. And he walked into the house and he passed the mother, the, the other daughter. He passed, passed the, the priest or the, the, the preacher and then he passed the doctor. And the doctor said, well, she's dead, just give up. There's no use. <clears throat> so he walked over there and he looked at the girl and he prayed for her. And nothing happened. Sounds like a lot of us. But he prayed a second time. <clears throat> and he turned to the wall and he began to speak in tongues. And he began to cry out to God. And he looked back and nothing happened. So I imagine that he began to scratch his head. And think, Lord, I'm, I'm being made a fool. People don't think that you're real if you don't heal her. That could be a case in many different situations. But something rose up in Billy Cole that day. It was an anger. He wasn't angry at the girl, but he was angry at death. Okay, because death has already been swallowed up. Death has no sting any longer. We need to understand that it's because of the cross. If you can understand this, there is no sickness that can stay in this building tonight. If you can wrap your mind around the fact that because of the cross, because of the blood that was shed by Jesus himself, it covers every sickness then, now, and in the future. Any sickness you have right now. It has already paid for it. You just need to go up and receive it. And the way to receive it is through faith. It's already healed. 
It's already taken care of. You're already delivered. It's waiting up here for you. <laughs> it's sitting here, right here. So Billy Cole looked at that girl. And he said, get up right now in the name of Jesus. And color came back to her face. And in a few moments, she was sitting up talking. But that did not happen because Billy Cole gave up. It did not happen because he allowed doubt to enter his mind. But it happened because he understood the apostolic authority that had been given to him just like it was given to Peter to loose the miraculous. Blind Bartimaeus, after this these altars are open. Blind Bartimaeus cried out, Jesus! And they told him, be quiet. Be quiet. You don't deserve to yell out. He said, no. Jesus! And Christ walked over to him and said, what do you want? Not like that, but. He said, he said what do you want? He said, that I may be healed. Jesus is here right now. And he is asking you, what do you want? What do you need? What do you want? What do you need? But the one thing that God specifically told me about this service. He's going to heal the people. That have a spirit of desperation. If there is a spirit of desperation. But I know there is desperation. For you to be desperate. You have to have absolute faith. You will not be desperate if you don't have faith. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. If you don't have desperation. It will be because you don't have faith. It is faith. It is absolute faith that God is going to do it. That births that desperation. Like blind Bartimaeus. Like the lame man. He was desperate. He was determined. Like the woman with the issue of blood. She said, I'm going to push my way through the crowd. Until I touch the hem of his garment. Because I have faith that I will be made whole. There is no need for any minister to lay his hands upon you for you to receive your miracle. Brother Blankenship does not have to lay his hands on you for you to receive your miracle. If he wants to, that is wonderful. But you need to understand that you're going to receive your miracle tonight because of your faith. Because of your desperation. It will be your faith that births your miracle in your life. That's it, yes. That's it. Let our faith rise right now. Come on, there is the miraculous in this altar. Can you reach out and grab it? Don't leave until you got it. Don't leave until you got it. Come on, God is going to do it. In the name of Jesus. 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 soto. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. Lord, we mark upon your 
I want, I want everyone to look at me real quick. I'm doing this under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Those of you that are in a location, if you're kneeled down, you don't have to get up. But I need a location right here. There is nobody. I need a clear spot right here in the middle. If you can go to the right or go to the left. And make this aisle clear as well. If you're kneeled down, you can stay kneeled down. That's okay. But if you can make your way to the left and to the right, I need an open spot right here. It's time that we look square in the face the sickness that may be in your body. If this is the only way to lift our faith, so be it. But I've made my mind up that I'm not going to leave tonight until we see a miracle. Not for my own self, but because I know that God is waiting to do it. If you have a physical ailment in your body, if you have a sickness, if you have a disease, if something is wrong with your physical body, and you need a healing tonight, not, not next week, not tomorrow, but if you need a healing tonight, I want you to make your way to the center right here. And those of you that don't have a physical need in your body, can you make your way to the left or to the right? We're going to deal with you in a second. I believe diabetes is a spirit of Satan. I believe it's a demonic spirit. Understand that when we speak the name of Jesus, that spirit must be gone. Does anybody have diabetes here tonight? I want you to lift your hand and leave it, leave it up. Don't take it down. Lift your hand high if you have uh, diabetes in your body. I know I'm changing it up, but those that have their hand up, I need somebody to go to that person right now that has faith. Somebody go to somebody with their hand up. Don't start praying with them. Just one second. I'm going to wait until everybody has somebody with their hand up. God is about to rebuke that spirit of diabetes. It has taken too many of our people. Does everybody have someone? When you pray for that person, you need to have the understanding that it is the will of God for them to be healed tonight. You need to understand that because of the cross, they were already made whole, but we've got to claim that healing. And you need to speak to diabetes. Speak it by its name and tell it to leave because you have the authority to do that. It must listen to you. Can we lift our voices right now, church? Let's begin to pray for these people. By the authority of the word of God. Because of the blood that you shed, oh Jesus Christ. I command diabetes to be gone from these bodies right now. I rebuke diabetes in the name of Jesus, it has no power. It has no authority. It must be gone right now. We lose that apostolic authority. We lose that apostolic power. We lose the gift of healing. We lose the gift of faith. We lose the gift of the miraculous. Come on, that's it. Come on, that's it. That's faith. That's faith. That's faith. Come on, you're being healed right now. You're being set free right now. In the name of Jesus. Right now, by the authority. I command this Lord Jesus to be gone. You must get out. You must get out. 
Come on, that's it. That's it. Come on, let that desperation rise. Let that determination rise. Yes, yes. You're not going to leave until you got your miracle. You're not going to leave until you're healed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I command that diabetes to get out. I command that diabetes to get out. Right now. Right now. Be made whole. Be made whole. It's the will of God. In the name of Jesus. 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 Oh. Yala la 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 mosatai. God is still healing. Come on, there's miracles still laying around. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. It's your faith. It's your faith. It's your faith. It's your faith. Come on. I want y'all to keep praying, but listen to me. Don't stop praying. There are angels walking in our midst right now. I want you to listen, but keep praying, okay? I have been told that there are angels walking in our midst, and they have brand new organs. If you need an organ transplant in your body, if you need new organs in your body, I don't know who you are. But if you need new organs in your body, you need to reach out. Take that organ that the angel has. He's walking around and they want to give it to you right now. That's it. God is putting it inside your body. That's it. That's absolute faith. That's absolute faith. Yes. Yes. God is putting that organ in your body right now. God is putting it in your body right now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, God is putting that organ in your body right now. God is taking out the bad organs. God is putting in that holy, that good, that whole organ right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. He cut masatai in the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. In the name of Jesus. He cut masatai. Does anybody have cancer tonight? Does anybody have cancer? Does anybody have a tumor? Does anybody know someone that has cancer? 
Do you have a family member or a friend that has cancer or a tumor? I want you to lift your hand. If you Hold it up. Hold your hand up. You're going to stand in the gap for that person. Because of your faith, they're going to be made whole. Because of your faith, they're going to be healed. I want you to find somebody with their hand up if you're not praying. And I want you to go to them. I want you to rebuke that cancer. I want you to rebuke that cancer right now. And because of your faith, they are going to be made whole. The Spirit of God is going to go to them right now. They're going to start to feel something in their body right now. God is taking that cancer out. God is destroying that cancer cell because of your faith in the name of Jesus. I rebuke cancer. I rebuke every cell that cancer may be wrapped around. Make it whole right now. Give that body new cells right now in the name of Jesus. That's it. Come on, that's it. That's it. That's it. Come on, that's desperation. That's faith. That's it. Come on, that's it. That's it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's it. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Truth is being established. That's it. Oh, in the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus.
That's it. That's your faith. You're making this happen. I said, you're making this happen. That's it. You're doing it. You're making it happen. Oh, yes, yes. That's beautiful. You're making it happen. In the name of Jesus. Oh, why don't we lift our voice for your pastor right now? Come on, let's lift our voices for Pastor Blankenship right now. Let's pray for the under shepherd that is guarding your soul. That's it, that's it. In the name of Jesus, God is going to heal you even greater because you're praying for the man that's guarding your soul. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody can get the Holy Ghost right now. I said God wants to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost right now. That's it. If you've never received the Holy Ghost, I want you to throw your hands up in the air. Begin to cry out to Jesus. Come on, God wants to fill this young girl with the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, God is taking us to another level, church. God is doing a spiritual work that we cannot see. Come on, you're making this happen. It's your faith, it's your praise, it's your worship, it's your prayers. That's it.
Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus.
there are still angels in our midst. And there are some organs, understand this please, that some of you have not reached out and taken by faith. There are angels still walking around with your miracle. I also feel that we need to pray right now for pain that is in somebody's body currently. If you have current pain in your body, or if you have a current ailment or a deformity, I want you to make your way down to the center right here. If you have current pain in your body, and you need that pain to go away tonight. If you have current pain, lift your hand so I know who you are. Okay, keep hold your hand up, please. And I'm going to tell you this is the will of God because the second I leaned over and told Brother Blankenship that God wants to heal current pain, this brother right here in the blue shirt came up to me and said, I have pain in my shoulder right now. I need to be healed of it. That was a confirmation that that's what God wants to do right now in this segment of the service. God has already healed the things that we cannot see or cannot feel. But God wants to do it and take it to a greater level. I believe that our faith is at a level to where when we speak, you can put your hand down, when we speak the name of Jesus, that pain is going to instantly flee your body. I need everybody else to stand to your feet, please. If you can, just for a few moments, I know you're tired, but I need everybody to pray with me. And I need you to lift your voice here in a second, as loud as you can, unto a God that is able. And I want us all to yell the name of Jesus, even those that are seeking a healing. And when you do that, the pain is going to leave your body instantly. Just so we're all going to do it at the same time, I'm going to count to three. And I want us to yell the name of Jesus with the understanding that that name died upon the cross. That person, God incarnate, died upon the cross, shed his blood for the pain that you have right now. When you speak that name, you are loosing that blood to heal that pain. One, two, three. Jesus! Jesus! Pain be gone right now. Pain be gone right now. Pain be gone right now. It must go. It must go. Pain, get out. Come on, that's it, that's it. That's it, yes, yes. church lift your voice come on begin to rebuke that pain rebuke that pain you have the authority you have the power it's the will of God it's the will of God I said it's the will of God and it's happening right now it's happening right now
That's it. That's it. That's it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. One more time, can we just give God a great praise? Can we just lift our voices one more time? With whatever energy you have, with whatever voice you have left, lift it high. Lift it high one more time. That's it, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, Jesus. Jesus. You feel that, that hunger? Not only is God healing us, but He wants to take us deeper. I said, He wants to take us deeper. I just feel that. God wants to take us to a new level. Oh, deep calleth unto deep. Oh, oh! I don't know what I'm feeling right now. I, I know it's just a, a warm spirit. It's a deepness. I can't stop this. We're sitting at the feet of Jesus. We're in the Shekinah glory. Oh, yes. Come on, God is doing, He's doing a great work right now. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Take us deeper, oh God. Take us deeper, oh God. Take us deeper, oh God. name of Jesus I believe that God wants to commune with us on a great level right now I believe that God is speaking to somebody right now listen to that voice listen to that still small voice Let's listen. I believe that God wants to speak to us right now. Let's just be still in His presence for a few seconds. In the name of Jesus. 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 Oh, God. Let us listen. Reach out by faith. Reach out by faith. 
Oh, yes. Just believe. Just believe. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, yes. It doesn't matter what you think. Oh, help our unbelief, God. You know. Let go with it all and just believe. Take me at my word. I will do what I said I will do. Just believe. Just believe. Just believe. Oh, come on, church. Let's respond to the word of God right now. Come on, that's for all of us. That's for all of us. Just believe in the name of Jesus. Just believe. Just believe. Just believe. believe. Jesus' name. I don't care if he, I don't care if that man, listen to me. I don't care if that man is the one man that gives the interpretation every single church day. I don't care if this was his first time or if it was every time. What he spoke was from God. That was God speaking through that vessel. We serve a God that cannot lie. Neither the Son of Man that He should repent of what He has said He's going to do. If He said it, He's going to do it. The hardest thing, though, is to get us to a point where we believe. I want to open this session up just for a few seconds, a minute or two. To anybody that wants to testify, I believe it's an order for us to testify about what God has done in our lives. Because I know that God has healed somebody here tonight, if not most of us. If you would like to testify with a blankenship, is this okay? If you would like to testify, I want to open it up to those who God has healed uh, you tonight. Not what God did for you last week but what God has done for you tonight in this service. Anybody, if you want to lift your hand or make your way up here, I will hand the mic to you. I've had a migraine for about five days now, and it's like completely gone. I've had um, migraines since I was nine off and on, um, probably more often than not. And like I said, it's been five days, and it's completely gone. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. Yes. Truth is being established because of that testimony. Truth is being established. Revelation is coming to you that you never thought you could have. Anybody else? Amen. Hallelujah. God has healed my mind and my mouth of the judgment and indignation that I used to speak. And he's allowed me to speak grace and love and truth in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Isn't God mighty? Isn't God wonderful? God can do anything. Nothing is too hard for God. I don't care what it is. Praise God. Anybody else? If you can pass that back. Hello. um, I would like to thank God for this service tonight. I'd like to thank God for being in the sanctuary of the saints. And um, as I was doing praise and worship this morning and everything, I had a pain in my left leg, you know, and it was like my leg was going numb. And uh, so I went to the back and everything to stretch, and and I asked the brother to pray for me as he walked by and everything, you know. And, um, and, and I was really discouraged, you know, I was really like, oh, oh my God, you know, because I was diagnosed with prediabetes about nine years ago now. And um, I haven't been to the doctor in like four years, you know, so I've been trying to take care of myself as best I possibly can. 
but hey, you know, hey, uh, a, a lot of things been going on in my, in my life, and um, unfortunately, I haven't been doing what I should be doing to the fullest, you know. Um, but the thing about it is, is though, I'm glad for God's mercy because when I picked up the Bible today, um, during during the service, because I'm not gonna lie to you, I was very discouraged. You know, and I was like, oh my God, I don't want anything bad happen to my body or anything like that, you know, to have to amputate anything or anything like that. And, and, so, um, and so I put up the Bible and I like to, you know, go to the book of Psalms for something quick, you know, a quick little bite, you know. And, um, and so the scripture that I, that I landed on, I couldn't turn my head from reading these scriptures. And it was talking about the mercy of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It was talking about how the mercy endure forever. Hallelujah. Thank you. And over and over again, the mercy of the Lord endure forever and that and that just hit my spirit and it just lifted me up and 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 I was still going through warfare and and I was like that's my word right there God is saying believe that I have mercy upon you I don't care what you've been going through believe that I have mercy upon you and then when the word of the Lord came through hallelujah through the, through, through this young man of God I think I thank God for you because of the simple fact of that word, when he talk, starts talking about the lame man, I'm like, my God, my, my dear Jesus. And that word was so full of, of uh, 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 I believe it's called a rhema word, revelation, hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus, for the words you have given today. And throughout the service, hallelujah, my, my leg has felt better and better and better and better. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I know that the good thing that God has begun in my mind, my body, and my soul, he shall continue it in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that encouraging? Praise God. Truth is being established. Truth is being established. Um, so, actually, nobody really knows this, but I look really healthy, but for um, a couple of months, actually longer than that, I've actually had severe body pain in my legs. It's kind of through my family to have really bad knees and stuff. I have terrible knees. Um, I've kind of kept it away. It's actually surged through to my lower legs and my ankles. I also have really bad back pain, and like a lot of you guys know, I'm an artist. I'm always hunched over because I never do anything like I'm supposed to, and <laughs> the nerves have like basically been like destroyed in my shoulders, and it's actually gone down through my right arm, which is my predominant arm. Um, tonight, I came in with that pain, and it was actually getting really, really bad to the point where I was starting to get a headache, and then I came up and prayed for pain, and I don't feel any of it anymore. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I know you're an artist, but I believe you're going to be the fastest runner in your family. God is going to give you new knees like he already has. That's what I feel in my spirit. That may seem comical to some of you, but that's what God quickened in my heart. Not only are you, are you renewed, but it's above and beyond. You don't have the same kneecaps. It's better kneecaps. You don't have the same nerves or spinal cord. It's a better, better spinal cord. Praise God. I feel that strongly in Jesus. Anybody else? All right. I'm excited about this one. <laughs> Woo. Praise the Lord. Um. You all know that um, I got diagnosed with having this um, black clot in my jugular vein, and um, it takes about six months for it to go away. Well, anyway, when I first got diagnosed with it a little over a week ago, um, one of the symptoms of it is like it, took, it felt like somebody took a hammer and hit me in the center of my head, and the headache went all the way down. The other thing, it was affecting my short-term memory, um, as well as sometimes my words would get kind of slurred, and I'll forget what I was saying. Um, but anyway, the headache has been unrelentless. It's been getting better, but it's still been enough there where I've been noticing it. But especially after all this crying tonight, I thought for sure my head would probably be exploding by now. But the headache is completely gone. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, praise God. Oh, God, you are so good. He promised it in his word. And he's fulfilling his word. And I'll say again, truth is being established. 
because of these miracles, you're thinking, this church has the truth. This church really has the power. This church really has the right directions on how to get to heaven, how to be saved, how to live holy. The pastor that's leading this church must be a real man of God. <laughs> and I don't know how many visitors we have here tonight, but let these miracles confirm that this is a truth-bearing church. We have another testimony. When I first came into church, I've been here like numerous times. Um, I was getting like these confirmations, like this brother walked up, he gave me a confirmation, and then I, I heard the one where um, someone, I, I was prayed for, for the Lord to give me like a brand new kneecap, a brand new cartilage or something like that. And a man in a church uh, about a, maybe a, a month ago said the same thing I, because about um, uh, back in August, uh, um, August of last year, I fell down on some concrete and broke this kneecap in half. And um, they wired it back together and put it back in my leg. And um, I mean, uh, the Lord, I heard the Lord speak to me and he told me that he already healed it. You know, <laughs> so I was like, and every time I come to this church, you know, like I ain't no member in this church, but I'm a member in the body of Christ, right? And um, every time I come here, and people pray for me. I receive from Jesus every time. And that's why I came in here tonight. And the Lord told me right up here, I already healed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise God. Confirmation right here. Confirmation right here. I know we're pressed for time, but is there anybody else that has a quick testimony of what God did for you tonight? You do. I like that. She's like Barnabas right here. Right here. You can pass that to her. I want to give God praise and glory tonight because I love to dance before the Lord. And lately, uh, this knee has been hurting. And I wear flat shoes now and things like that. And even though I dance and I dance in pain, but now I feel no pain at all in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. I think this was a, a, a kneecap healing service. <laughs> Praise God. I, someone raised their hand over here. I thought you did, sir. I feel great. Uh, many of y'all know I had shoulder surgeries. It's been almost seven weeks now, so I'm going back to work this week. And it's, my shoulder's been hurting me worse right now than before so i think it's a little bit about not wanting to go back to work but and, anyway i believe god has really touched me tonight i feel fantastic hallelujah and also while i was standing there praying i saw god dealing with you brother Brent. you are a mighty man of god i see some things really huge potential coming upon you i really feel in the holy ghost right now i'd like to see a few men come here and pray for this man of god Thank you, Jesus. Bring him into bring him into his destiny, O God. Bring him into his destiny. Bring him into his destiny, O God. Bring him into his destiny. Bring him into his destiny. Bring him into his destiny. Direct his footsteps. Bring him into his destiny. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Bring him into his destiny. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you so much. Thank you. I received that word. I claim that word in Jesus' name. I know it's late, but I don't want to miss anybody. And it's okay if you don't have a testimony. Don't feel bad. Praise God. Isn't God good? 
But I want to encourage every single person before I pass this over to your pastor. I guess you can call it a warning. Yes, ma'am, you're the first lady. You, get to, you can do what you want. <laughs> I'll take that mic. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Um, I just want to give the Lord glory and honor because, um, you know, Sister Cook has had a long trial here, but I actually was diagnosed with the same thing. And that's why I have faith. Every time I pray for Sister Cook, I pray resurrection and life for her. I laid on my couch for a year. I vomited every morning four and five times every day because of the same diagnosis that she had. God healed me of it overnight. Although I suffered from it for a year, they wanted to put me on meds. And I'm not saying this to hurt her in any way because I believe Sister Cook has great faith. I believe she's going to see every miracle she's prayed for. I believe that we have to believe that if we believe in God. I want this church to believe for Sister Cook because God is no respecter of persons. And I told God, I said, God, I don't want to live this way. I said, I've raised my daughter, my husband, he'll be fine without me. We'll just go on, just take me on home. If, if you want me to live, heal me of it. If you want me to die, take me tonight. Don't let me wake up in the morning. When I woke up, it was gone. I never suffered from it again. And although I vomited every day for a solid year, it's gone. I, ha I don't have any effects from it whatsoever. And Sister Cook, don't give up. God is going to touch your body. This lady's going to be a witness, and she's going to be everything God said she's going to be. In Jesus' name. Praise God in the name of Jesus. I believe that. The longer you have to suffer, the greater your testimony is going to be. If she had suffered one day and then God healed her, she would have been happy. But a whole year, every day having to suffer, I guarantee it's impl implanted within her mind. The thankfulness and the gratitude and the true understanding of the healing power of God. Because of her suffering, Jesus' name. Before I hand it to Pastor Blankenship, I just want to, I'm not condemning, I'm not getting on, I'm not chastising, I don't have the place to do that or the right, but this is from God. The people that testified, and those that claim their healing, and those that testified about God healing them. If there's anybody here tonight, it's not the fact that you can't believe it. But it's the fact that you can't rejoice with them. Be careful. Because the day you try to find a healing may be the day that God is going to make you wait. Because you cannot rejoice with those that have testified. I'm not saying that you can't, I'm not saying that you don't have faith. Okay? Everyone has a measure of faith. But sometimes throughout the years we get calloused. We hear report after report after report after report of what God does, what God does, what God does. You, you need to rejoice with them and be thankful because one day you're going to need a miracle. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for your attention. You, you have given your attention to God wonderfully. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I don't like getting delayed just because someone's gone over time or we've goofed around or sang a thousand songs or anything like that. That annoys me. But I don't mind being delayed at all when the Spirit of God is moving. And God is in the Spirit of God has moved here tonight. Amen. Amen. I appreciate our singers and musicians and all them, and they got into place and do what they normally do, and they do a wonderful job. But I, I, that was me that called it all off. I said, no, I don't feel to sing tonight. Because you know what some of us do? You all just stop praying and start singing. And we don't need the singing once we get into his presence. Praise is to bring us in and usher us and get us connected with the Spirit of God. Once that connection is made, then we need to we need to 
dig around in some things and get, get some things God has for us. I feel God spoke to me tonight about something that's going to end up being a message. That's how it happens a lot of times. But God did a whole lot more here tonight than we've even heard. And I've been told things tonight of what God's done a month and two months ago. And I was sitting here and it occurred to me, we're going to hear things because I don't know what it is about us. When we got a problem, we'll get on Facebook and phone and we'll share it everywhere. Then God does something for us and we don't tell nobody. And that's a fault among us that we've got to overcome. The scripture says we are made overcomers by the word of our testimony. Our testimony is just simply telling what God's done and give him the glory. So I gave you the nugget. I'll, I'll give you the whole deal here in a little while. <laughs> I feel the anointing of God. Here's what I want to do. I know we've gone a little late tonight, but uh, I feel good. My heart is full tonight. I feel like something is, some things have been accomplished in the spirit, and this is going to be a good week. Um, Brother Merritt uh, drove down this afternoon all the way from Winchester for this one service. I want to take care of his gas and, and, and some meals, and I want to be a blessing to him with the offering. This is the only thing he has t- to, to make a living and just travel by faith. And because he's not yet, he's an AIM missionary and not a fully appointed missionary. AIM missionaries are the half step. And many go through AIM work to become the full-fledged missionary. And, uh, and, and the only difference is it's a level within our programming. The district missions coordinators and so forth are not working to set schedules up for the AIM missionaries, they have to do it on their own, and they're and they're among a network, and they're you know, and so it's it's uh, it's a huge step of faith, and but God honors faith, Amen. So my point is, we want to be a blessing to them tonight, and if you're able, as we do many times when we have missionaries with us or guests, if you're able tonight and would like to give an offering toward them, if you would, before you leave the sanctuary, if you just leave it on the pulpit. And we'll take care of it and route them and be a blessing. A couple of you that have traveled on, on AYC trips or any kind of missions trips and you're interested in that, maybe have a couple of questions so forth in about five minutes. Brother Merritt, uh, we will meet in my office if you're welcome to co- come by for a few minutes if you'd like to talk with him about how AIM works. Amen. You still want to do that? Brother uh, Clay just uh, needs a quick meeting with the drama department in the fellowship hall. I want you to have a wonderful week seeking God. Continue to pray for Sister Sharp. We anointed some handkerchiefs, and we sent them out tonight to these. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed tonight in the name of the Lord. We'll see you Wednesday night. We're going to have an awesome time in the Holy Ghost.